on a horrible accident. Would you believe that? I don't know. I think a lot of people are watching this story unfold. It's incredibly troubling. Um, look, this, this, the, the Saudis are being ruled essentially by this crown prince who has uh, offered all a series of reforms. But there's a lot of people who wonder whether that's just window dressing for a very brutal and rogue totalitarian regime where human rights is just a foreign concept, the persecution of Christians, people of other faith, and journalists, uh, as well as others who might be critics of the government, yeah. remains a serious problem in this regime. Yeah, so then why would you believe them? I mean, why, why bring a bone saw to an interrogation? Right. Bring an autopsy expert to an interrogation. Why even lend them any credence to this? Especially when the person who they brought all these uh, despicable devices to was someone who had, uh, you know, is very close uh, to the, the ruling family, um, is akin, and had a lot of information, was seen as potentially a threat publicly with his writings. So I think your concerns uh, are well stated. So that leads us to where we are today. And we just saw Mike Pompeo with the crown prince. And he, let me just show you in case you haven't seen it. We have some video of that. And, you know, look, he's smiling. It appears, as Clarissa described it, convivial. They're, they're smiling at each other. They're clearly friendly. There's some laughter there. Why? Why is that the tone? Let me just tell you, Mike Pompeo and I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, in the middle of the Midwest. Um, he's a good friend of mine. And this is this is who he is. He is going to approach the crown prince uh, with hospitality and uh, and kind of a, a good demeanor. But I can tell you something else about my Pompeo. I know very well. Don't worry. When that camera turned off and the reporters left the room, I'm sure he had a blistering and a sober message. And I have no doubt of that. I think it's wrong for us. We've seen secretaries of state for, for representing the American government for decades go to Saudi Arabia, hold hands with the, uh, with the leadership. That's kind of one of their cultural uh, uh, things that they do. We've had smiles before the cameras with John Kerry and William Christopher and others, but behind, when that camera is turned off, I'm confident Mike Pompeo delivered a message about human rights and what America expects. Well, we appreciate your insight into Mike Pompeo and how he would act because it's hard to tell, frankly, Matt. I, mean, I don't he, think it is. Well, Not well, at all. Then explain why the president no. seemed to accept the king's denial and say maybe it was rogue killers. No, I think the great thing that the president did is he actually called the king. And I think what's happening with the Trump administration, you have to admit, Allison, with your reporting, you're missing one huge piece. When the president went to Saudi Arabia on his first foreign trip, he went overseas to these three important uh, centers of power yeah. and gravity. And he, on Saudi Arabian soil, talked about the scourge of radical Islamic terror in front of the whole royal family and the leadership in the government. Things were said in Saudi Arabia by American president that were never said. We are pushing the Saudis very hard. By the same token, yeah. it is a brutal regime. It is not a democracy. You do not have the same kind of rights like you have in Western democracies. No, this you is don't. And Matt, just to, I'm so, I mean, just to get into what you're saying, he did not push the Saudi regime on human rights. Terrorism, yes, that's a shared purpose, obviously. That is human rights. But not human that Matt, is human. That's part of it. That's part Matt, of human no, rights. We're talking about something different. President Trump feels strongly about fighting terrorism. Human rights? Obviously, there's still public beheadings going on. And killing and dismembering a journalist, a Washington Post journalist, the president has not uh, Allison, strongly, I think strongly um, condemned this. I don't agree. I read that spe speech. I watched that speech. But you are right to say that what the American government is trying to do, by the way, for 50 years, Democrats and Republicans alike, Name the policies from Barack Obama that were harsh on Saudi Arabia. Matt, what Every I'm trying to figure out, I, mean, I don't want to get fast. into a history of Saudi Arabia. What I'm yeah, trying let me just to figure finish out is real that, fast. If, hold on, <laughs> I want you to answer this. Is the administration going to accept this face-saving measure? If Saudi Arabia says this was just an accident, whoops, sorry, is the administration, the Trump administration going to accept that? I don't think so. I don't know what they're going to say publicly. I'm not clairvoyant. But I do know that this is going to cast a pall, at least in their private conversations about this important relationship. As I said, Democrat and Republican presidents realize that Saudi Arabia is very important with the radical radicalization of Iran and other powers uh, in the Middle East. It's important to have a relationship with them, but we've got to continue to push them. And the real question, Allison, is this. Is the crown prince 
uh, implementing reforms that are real, and will it lead to more rights for their citizenry, or is it all a is it all fake? Is it all window dressing so that they can get what they need? from America in the West. And I think that question is very unresolved. Well, that is an important question. And we just had Marco Rubio on, and he had other burning questions about what happened at the consulate. So listen to what he'd like them to answer. Where's the body? Um, why wasn't the family notified? Why have they spent the better part of eight or nine days uh, saying they didn't know anything about it. And it's something we have to address from a human rights standpoint. Just because a country we're working with did it doesn't mean the U.S. can just shrug its shoulder and say, well, look, nothing happened here. That's what people are calling for, Matt, is the president to say something like that, that, yes, we have deals with them for sure, but we have to address human rights. And we haven't Absolutely. heard President Trump say that yet. Well, you don't know what he's saying in private. No, we okay? don't know that's... what he's saying in public. And in public, he's accepting the king's denial. No, I don't think that's right. I think the question is, is this. He is in an ongoing conversation. He, Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, Jared Kushner, these other important people in the administration, they are pushing the Saudis on major questions like their funding of terrorism, which is the biggest problem we have on the globe. And, and just be, it's easy for a senator. I think I agree with everything Marco Rubio just said, but it's easy for a senator to, to, to uh, make pugnacious comments. It's harder when you're the president. And CNN chastises the president a lot for just saying things. And David Gregory just said he's uh, sometimes someone who has loose talk, which is a fair criticism. Th this, it's also important that our president be mindful that the words he chooses matter. It would be to grandstand. But what he has to do is be effective in yeah. pushing them into the international community's understanding of what human rights are. That's what I care about. Okay, so what should the ret what will the retribution be? If, if the president says one thing but actually is much sterner in terms of punishment, what will the U.S. do about this? Uh, you know, the, there are a full array of options on the table. I don't think it's smart uh, for America to pull back on arms sales. I think that would be very unwise. We, this military cooperation between Saudi Arabia and the United States has been going on, like I said, I know it's history, sorry, but it's been going on for 50 years, and I think it's a pretty important one. But the Saudis need many things from the American government. Remember, the Saudis have been an oil-based, a petroleum-based economy, and that has, uh, that has its ups and its downs, especially yes. as we have an increasingly diverse energy well, portfolio. Well, for sure. I mean, that's why so they many people America think— They need America to move forward. There you go. That's why mm -hmm. so many people think that the U.S. is actually in the power position here. I the agree. U.S. doesn't have to compromise. The U.S. doesn't have to accept their explanation for this might have been an interrogation gone wrong. And the, the problem, Matt, is that so often the president seems to accept really kind of ludicrous denials, including from— Putin, including from Kim Jong-un. Let me just play you uh, a couple of moments of those. I, I'd love to respond to those. So, let, let's do that. Listen <laughs> okay. to this. I just spoke with the king of Saudi Arabia, who denies any knowledge of what took place. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. Let me just tell you. Roy Moore denies it. That's all I can say. He denies it. And, and by the way, he totally denies it. Manafort has totally denied it. He, he denied it. What is that, Matt? How do you explain that? I, 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 I don't even want to put people like Paul Manafort and Roy Moore into this conversation. Let's talk about his diplomacy overseas. What presidents do, presidents of both parties, is they tried to build a relationship with important people. I think the Putin press conference was an example where most people watching that were just like, come on, you got to hit him a bit on this. And he, t he failed to do that. And I think that was a big mistake. On Kim Jong-un, I actually think he has pushed him further along. Steve Began, who's our envoy to, uh, envoy to North Korea, is making great strides. I actually feel like we've made a big difference in North Korea. Saudi Arabia, Allison, you're right. It's a big question mark. Where does this relationship go? Is the president uh, using the proper finesse to get them on the right track when it comes to human rights, or at least approaching it better? I don't know. That's to be determined. What do they decide to do as an administration? I'm not sure. I will agree with you on this. This is a big test. What will they do? And will they grandstand, or will they continue to push uh, the royal family and the, more, most specifically the crown prince towards understanding that when he is off the tracks when it comes to human rights and decent behavior, there will be repercussions. And I want there to be. 
Matt, we really appreciate your insight and giving